Uh, welcome to another edition of the Art Business Podcast. It's 2023. This will be the first podcast of the new year. And um, I'm very pleased to uh, welcome back Alicia Livingston, who's been a subject of a guest on the podcast before. Uh, she um, has a, an art gallery in St. Ives in Cornwall. Um, and um, with her is Katie Close, who's the gallery director. Um, and also um, with me in the room in our Sotheby's Institute in Bedford Square, London, um, I've got three of this year's MA Art Business students um, who, as you will see, were involved in curating projects at um, Alicia's Gallery um, in, in, in St. Ives. So we've also got um, Maria Whitby and uh, Beatrice Scalello, um, who actually worked uh, together um, with two or three other students. We, uh, we'll talk about the project in a, in, in a moment. Um, and uh, we've also got Jeremy Rosen, uh, who was in, who curated a different show in, in St. Ives. Um, so um, I'm just going to say a few words about why we take our MA Art Business students to St. Ives in Cornwall. Uh, we've, we've done this several times in the past, and now we've developed a relationship with um, Alicia and Katie, um, who have very kindly embraced us and our students when we visit um, in the winter. You're, you're, very, you're very welcome. It's uh, been a really fun collaboration for us that has definitely yeah. taken us out of our comfort zone. Yeah, no, well, thank you again anyway. And it's it's, been, it's become a great collaboration. And also it means that we, we've, we've made good relations, not just with Alicia and Katie and St. Ives, but also with people like Michael Gasser, uh, who is the director of Belgrave Gallery that that now is based in a in a kind of farm setting outside of St Ives, which is very interesting, kind of Hauser and Worthy. Um, and um, we've we've also um, got good relations with Tate, the public gallery, of course, in St Ives, um, and also with the um, is it the the Porthmere Studios, mm -hmm. which um, if any of you want to look this up. Um, online, you will see that these are historically very important artist studios in the 20th century. They overlook this beautiful surf beach, uh, which also takes and Ives overlooks. And um, uh, those studios have a big history of um, attracting uh, very well-known artists over the years. And that we, we always take our students to visit some of the artists practicing there at the moment. Um, and um, in the past, people like Rothko, I think, have visited them. I think Francis Bacon has worked in one of them. So that's an amazing experience as well. Um, so in St. Ives, we, um, the rationale is to visit an, an out-of-town um, place for our international students. Many of them won't have been outside of London before. So we're showing that, that there are art worlds in the rest of the UK. The this year we divided the students into two groups um, and the other half of the students that I'm not talking about today went visited Glasgow and Edinburgh where they also visited both commercial and public galleries and did some similar um, exercises to the students in St Ives. Um, so uh, that's the rationale really to make students realise there's a world outside of the metropolis um, and because some of them might well go in and have in the, indeed in the past. So for example an alumna uh, of this program is the sales director of House and Worth in Somerset. Um, so she is someone who's kind of, you know, in that within that model of outside of the metropolis. Uh, and um, we 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 visit Tate. We're, we're taken around uh, Tate's and Ives by. I'm sure you'll agree these these really enthusiastic people who who are often St. Ives people and, and are often connected with the arts and know seem to know an awful lot about the art world and many of them that I've that, that we have taken us around have relationship have had friendships relationships with some of the artists they're showing us and the St Ives School for listeners who don't know is a very famous modernist particularly modernist movement although it its history goes back to the 19th century uh, but certainly in the 20th century and between the wars in particular we're talking about people like Barbara Hepworth um, and now Garbo and um, Ben Nicholson married to Hepworth uh, being just a few of artists that are now kind of internationally renowned um, and, and whose works still sell well on the big auction markets, for example. Patrick Heron is another one. I took a group, a small group of students. I don't think any of you were with me that day. We 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 went out to Michael Gather's um, farm gallery uh, outside of St. Ives and then we uh, 
we we took a cab to Zinna, this beautiful village along the coast, and we 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 had some lunch there, and then we walked back, and I pointed out to the students um, Patrick Heron's amazing house where he used to have his house and studio on the Eagle's Nest, and the fantastic landscape. But that's another, I think, aspect of St Ives um, is is that you have to go there to understand what the artists are creating. I think I think particularly coming back to Katie and Alicia to their gallery. So that that's just a little bit about why we go to St Ives. I'd better just add. We also, on the final morning, we, we took the coach um, and we visited the Tremonhir Sculpture uh, Park, which is just outside Penzance on the um, southern coast. <laughs> it's, uh, Cornwall is a peninsula, St Ives is very near Land's End. It's a very mythological area for sort of, you know, Celtic mythology. There's a lot of prehistoric remains, which also influenced the artists, particularly I was thinking of Barbara Hepworth, stone circles and so on. But we went to Tremon here Sculpture Park, which was also interesting because um, uh, Neil Armstrong, is, he's an easy name to remember because of the, <laughs> the first men on the moon. Um, and uh, he he's the director and owner of um, Tremon here Sculpture Park. And he kindly opened it up, especially for us, and walked us around. Um, and I'm sure the students agree that was an interesting experience of bringing nature and culture together with site-specific often commissioned works by contemporary um, sculptors and installers, the famous names being people like Richard Long and um, James Turrell there. So that, that's the kind of mixture of the things we did. But the main thing, the main reason for being St. Eyes was to give our students some, uh, we have a new unit called Professional Practice, which is does what it says on the tin, hopefully, and the gallery curation exercises in St. Ives and in Scotland were about that. So I will now ask um, Alyssa and Katie maybe together. I, first, I'd like them to just to update us on Livingston St Ives, which is the name of the gallery, on the new space you've moved into, how that's going, and also maybe to talk a little bit about your, your Overwinter London project where you had a pop-up gallery in the King's Road. So over to Alyssa and Katie. Thank, thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, it's a fantastic collaboration for us too, so the, the feeling's mutual. Um, to, to update you, our, our, our gallery's been moving very fast since um, we first opened four years ago in Perrinport. For the last three years, our uh, flagship has been in St Ives. And this uh, summer, we've just moved to um, from our kind of quirky little cottage on 4th Street, which is one of the main shopping centres, to this fantastic seafront um, I think it's like a 15th century grade two listed pilchard press, which is a very large um, ground floor uh, space around a central atrium. And it's a very important space um, for us. It's been a gallery for the last, oh, 15 or 20 years. Um, the originally uh, John Grimble's gallery, who was a, a uh, famous St. Ives collector following the Portminster had a very successful 10 years before they've moved on to Four Street. And it's a very important space due to its fishiness, I think. And um, it, it's it's kind of iconic. So a Pilchard Press was, um, the Pilchard uh, fishing was the main trade for St. Ives for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years before it became the center of art excellence. And um, there used to be a key, um, the, the location is actually called Westcott's Key. The key no longer remains there, but the fish would be brought up um, and pressed in huge vats to make um, a, a particular oil that in the 18th and 19th century was used to light candles and was the major lighting oil, as well as the pilchards, I think, being a delicacy, but more in exported to to Spain. So it's got these fantastic um, weird granite pillars that actually look rather like kind of Eve Klein Venuses if you catch them at the right, like where the, the barrels, I think, pulled by donkeys would kind of compress, would compress this oil. And it's got slate floors, so it could be swept. Um, so it could be kind of floused out. And I believe the upstairs was a net loft. And so, so for us, the kind of fishy heritage of this building, which is you know now a um, contemporary art gallery, and I, I think we're in you know among the top five galleries in St Ives. Um, 
it's 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 wonderful for us that we kind of have this space that both kind of reflects St. Ives' heritage, as well as its fact that it's now an internationally renowned um, centre of art excellence through the Tate and the wider community of galleries that live there. Yeah, just you, the listeners might have heard some movement in the room at that point. Um, so I'd just like to welcome uh, Yuji Hay, uh, who is was in another gallery space in St. Ives. So well, welcome, Yuji. And we haven't started talking about the uh, the, the curated exhibitions. Alice is just explaining more about the history of her gallery in St. Ives, and then we're going to move on to the project. So make yourself at home anyway. Okay. Thank Sorry, Alicia. So, do you want to? Continue? Oh, you're welcome. So, we we also have a gallery in Bristol that's um, had a very exciting last few months of exhibitions. A fantastic uh, show exhibition called Star, um, New Color Now, where we introduced uh, six new artists to the gallery, emer uh, mostly emerging and some established, but who we consider fantastic colorists. That was a really fun way of curating and um, a kind of mix of figurative landscape paintings, but all really pushing, you know, with a fantastic eye for colour or, you know, pushing like new ways of um, exploring colour and palette. And that's um, just showing our winter exhibition. I never get the title right, Katie. Can you help me here? Wild, no. seas. Wild seas and winter skies. Thank you. We, um, it's, a, it's mostly a mix of a landscape and seascape painting led by uh, Jack Davis, who is um, had a fantastic year and is, you know, really establishing himself as one of Cornwall's foremost contemporary seascape and landscape uh, painters. We had a very fun weekend um, a few weeks back where Jaguar Land Rover visited the gallery to do some uh, filming for some social media adverts and their their blog the out and uh i got to uh i got the pleasure of being interviewed which is never never my favorite thing with the video camera rolling but then the the team and the range rover took a tour over that coastland that you're talking about to visit jack davis and his studio and uh go and do some en plein air painting and i mean he's much more photogenic than i am and uh it was a wonderful kind of um you know short film that they produced the the other thing we probably um have had going on is as you know and lots of your students know is we've also uh just finished a 12 week uh, pop up on the king's road in chelsea london it, we popped up for so long, we decided to call it a residency rather than a pop-up. But we we decided to do this instead of attending um, art fairs this autumn. So we spent a similar budget on a that we'd spend on a stand on a four-day art fair on um, a 12-week uh, kind of short-term let on a very beautiful property at um two I can't remember the number 241 Kings <laughs> Road. Um the costs for the rental actually were pretty similar. The only discrepancy um meant that staffing it for 12 weeks ran a lot more staffing costs than the art fair yeah. tend to do, which is short, you know, a short intensive team effort. Um our our it was very interesting. We connected with a lot of international clients. Um, Jack Davis was one of our leading artists. We sold a number of very large seascape paintings um, to collectors and interior designers. Um, we had two other fantastic shows we launched there, a figurative um, show by Henrietta Dubray, who is you know, a much loved and collected gallery artist. And also a show by uh, Rosa Roberts of her wonderful kind of energetic, green, luscious jungle and um, interior scapes, well, and jung I don't know, gardenscapes. And uh, that made us a lot of international and uh, interior design contacts, um, including, I think, uh, I don't, know, I don't want to say any names, um, but uh, people who we hadn't been able to connect with on that level in Cornwall. What we're so I think if you if you want some figures, I know 
your listeners and your students are probably very interested. Um, I think our, our, our rent was about, um, I think it was 2,500 um, a month, a week, including VAT. Uh, so it's 2,000 plus VAT and we did 12 weeks. So 24,000 plus VAT, which is pretty much what a, the largest stand, an 18 meter stand at art fair would cost us once we've factored in like some extra stands and things. Uh, that's an all-inclusive price. There's no business rates. That includes electricity, everything. Um, and then we decided to staff that seven days a week from 10 till 6. Um, and uh, so obviously that's where my staffing costs were larger than the art fair. Interestingly, we did a very similar figure. I think we did 60, 60 something thousand of sales which would work out uh slightly less than break even but what we're kind of looking at that as a long-term marketing strategy and investment and I was absolutely delighted when I switched on my laptop earlier in the week and there were a couple of quite high profile inquiries into paintings that we'd shown there um already this week we've got about I think 12 to 16,000 of leads. We call them leads because we don't know if they're going to convert or not at this point. But from paintings or uh, clients who we connected with through that residency. So how successful that is will be something I can tell you in six to 12 months time. <laughs> so in it's very interesting because you're, you're, the way you're presenting it, Alicia, is... You've got two business models there. Do you do you have a four day art fair or do you have a 12 week pop up in London? And it sounds as so overall, in terms of finance, do you think that would a four day art fair typically make more, you know, and, and, or would it be similar in, in terms of the final? Well, the thing about a four day art fair is you've got very little time to react to the market. So if I really, it depends who you bring. So the last art fair we we did um, was an affordable art fair at Battersea Park. Um, and I think we 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 made around 70,000 of sales mm. at the fair, which when I have to bring a team of four to six people and a van, actually two vans of paintings and accommodation and... Um, all those costs and ab it it was pretty break even for us. Yeah. We did get after sales. Um we did get after sales, but I don't I I wouldn't I think this is going to be better. Um judging by the kind of connectedness of how we were able to engage with clients. So um at an art fair, it's a very high pressurized environment. You've got four days. There's a lot of people in the room. If you don't buy that painting, someone else might. But as a gallery, we tend to sell quite large pieces of art. We love our large paintings, our average large painting size is, I don't know, three to 6,000. That is a big investment to be making in a very quick environment. Um, big paintings are sometimes hard to translate in your mind as to whether they fit in the space that you're thinking. And there's very little time in a normal gallery environment. We'd say, okay, send us some paint, send us some photographs of your wall, you know, behind the sofa, behind the bed. If you can give us a measurement, we can do a pretty good scale mock-up. Um, if you don't like this one, we'll show you something else. In a art fair, that has to happen very quickly. Mm also for us the time we get to talk to someone might be quite tight and quite rushed you might be talking to someone who might be a long-term great investment and someone will be standing there going can I can I pay for this one can I pay for this one it's like, well take the money take the client so we were able to have long chats with clients and talk about our services on a one-to-one -one, you know whether it just be the my member of staff and the client in the room um 
And for those reasons, I think the long term uh, kind of profit stroke loss on that might be more successful, despite the nightmare short term cash flow. Yes. <laughs> so we, I don't know if you want to talk about cash flow later in the program. <laughs> no, it's very, it's very interesting. I think it's very good, interesting for our students to hear about, you know, what are we going to invest our money in? Is it better to go for a four day art fair? Or is it better to find a pop up in a very high profile London location, you know, in Chelsea, after all, um, it, is a, it, is, it is a well known sort of art area. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just interesting for them to hear why you made those decisions and what the different experiences were. Yeah, and just one one thing we did that we had to um one of the big shows that we were planning, which is why we 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 thought got pulled at a very late notice, which is very oh. stressful. Yeah. We were then forced to kind of very hurriedly put something in, um, which didn't sell at the same projection that we were expecting from our kind of plan A. And the overall effect was that actually, while the first eight weeks sold very well, the last four weeks didn't. And if you'd have, if we were, if we we were able to stop it slightly short because we're on quite a short contract, mm. but the last we popped up for too long, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. Other, yeah, yeah, advice was it was too long. So eight weeks might be a, an optimal. I I reckon two weeks. You know, yeah. for a new business two weeks, do all your marketing before, get your social media, you know, make sure you've got, we were lucky because the first two shows, we'd done lots of invites, we'd got guest lists coming, we did a lot of advertising um, to get people to come. So kind of keep it short, hit the ground rolling. You can do a lot before and a lot afterwards. Yeah. Without, no, while you're, you know, from your bedroom on a laptop. Yeah. I don't know whether any of the students went down to King's Road. I popped in as Kate will remember one one Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I think some I think some of some of them certainly did because I did get some feedback. So um, um the other thing about London, of course, as my students will know, is that there's huge amounts of competition for you know they have very little time because of all the contact hours that you have with lectures and seminars and workshops and then you're writing your your researching and writing your assignments and finding the time to actually visit the galleries in London you know it's just so much to do so many things one misses all the time and then there's the public exhibitions that you know there's there's a lot of competition I think for time mm -hmm. in somewhere like London. Um, Katie would you like to um, would you like to say from your viewpoint moving now to the student projects in St Ives do you want to talk a little bit about how that was organised and how you found the locations, etc.? Yeah, of course. Um, so it was quite interesting. We started, um, we, we did workshops with you the year before. Um, and I think that was quite a last minute kind of... Um, yeah, that was the first time. <laughs> and it was, I think that was a great way to kind of see... Sorry, uh, yeah. A very small space, as Alyssa has already said, but oh, sorry to interrupt. It was also, we had all of our students, so we had far too many students yeah. you know typically we have 80 to 90 students and this year we learned that lesson so we thought we'd divide the groups mm -hmm. into half so we only had like 40 to 45 students in St Ives sorry to interrupt no no of course no. so I think that was a great way to kind of give us some indication of what things had worked that time and what things we could improve on so obviously having a smaller group to start with was quite helpful and we we split the group so there was six smaller groups of about seven to eight I think um, and we did a lot um, of, kind of the prep work we asked the students to do a lot of the prep work beforehand so um, they curated and kind of gave us um, their themes and their show introductions from using our website and selecting work from that as their kind of catalogue of, of work to choose from um, and we gave them a deadline before they before they even came to St Ives to, to put that together which I think uh, that's a lot of the hard work you know thinking about what your show is and are you thinking about the location the season subject matter colors you know what what are you kind of aiming for what's your audience all of those thoughts that so they did a lot of that before they even got to us which was great and we were so impressed you know as they were coming in it was um really wonderful to see and we kind of said we should get guest curators in more often because you know they kind of, they've made a lot of connections that maybe we wouldn't have seen or they would be things that we would have to really dig to to 
to notice or see and um it was really interesting um so we had we had three groups in our in terms of the locations um we obviously had quite big groups or sorry quite a lot of people and we didn't want everyone to be kind of crammed in so we used our Westcott's gallery and we had three groups in that space because it's quite big and were kind of separate areas to it um we then used um we reached out to the Spies arts club who are op right opposite us at Westcott's key and um that's a really historic building um you know I think it was established in 1890 and has always been an arts club um so that was a really nice space I think yeah one of your group team was a group there um we then used the Salt House Gallery who are uh, also in St Ives but kind of a bit there the gallery is just kind of off the harbour and off Fall Street um so it's a little bit tucked away but it's a really lovely intimate um gallery space that is a kind of heart for hire space which so if you go there there's normally a different exhibition every week um, from different people or artists hiring that space. Um, and then the final space we used was Host, which is um, a luxury set of suites and a bar and restaurant right in the centre of town. And um, they it used to be a bank and they did this incredible um, renovation of that space. And we currently supply the artwork for their, their rooms and their restaurant, um, so the group uh, Group six, I think, <laughs> the Rota Mandalay were, were there. And um, that was quite an interest, a very different space to the others in that it was a commercial hang rather than a, a kind of gallery. So the work's still for sale, but it's perhaps more, you know, it's the background to people's restaurant and dining experience. So that was really interesting. Um, yeah, so we had just a quick kind of <laughs> run through of the day. So obviously the students came down and they had other tasks that they did. Um, and then I think it was on the, the Thursday, we met them at about 9.30, introduced everything, showed them where all their um, where their spaces were. We kind of had to pre-arrange to make sure that all the works were kind of in the right location, apart from host, sorry, you guys, you had to carry it, carry it up the road. I've um, got some great video of um, <laughs> yeah. UG and her group taking large paintings along West Coast <laughs> Key through the streets of St Ives for the Salt it, It's actually, it's all, that, that happens a lot in St Ives and we sometimes say when it's quiet in the gallery in the summer, just take a painting for a walk, just take a painting for a walk. <laughs> That's great. Good marketing strategy. Um, <laughs> So that was quite interesting. So um, we kind of tried to make sure that everything was near enough in the right place to begin with, show the students around. And then they had about four hours to curate and hang the shows. And we had a real deadline because we had um, a private view starting at three o'clock, which the public were invited to. And some of our clients came um, alongside a few other of our kind of friends of the gallery. Um, so we started. So, you know, they had you know you had to be finished by three o'clock um so it was really it was a really tight turnaround I think everyone did really well to to get it all done but obviously they had kind of done that a lot of the curatorial work beforehand um in terms of their selections um so yeah the in terms of the private view we started at host you know being a bar and restaurant it felt like a, a good place to start um and had some drinks there and, and each group um as we went around each group introduced uh someone from each group uh told that told us about their their shows sorry um so yeah we started at host and then one did we kind of then went down to Westcott's Key and the St Ives Art Club um and then we went to the Salt House Gallery so everyone you know we had Prosecco it was as you know a normal private view but with the added kind of art tour element which was quite fun kind of going from one one space to the next um and then the following day the shows were open and the, the students were staffing the, the exhibitions um, and also viewing each other's shows and kind of going around and, and reviewing and David might mention the fictional budget and the kind of prizes that they were allocated um, but yeah it was really interesting and um, you know I think a great opportunity for the students to physically handle artwork and, and hang it and kind of you know there's lots of sometimes there's an annoying bit of the wall that doesn't do what it's you know that well there's something that's not quite you know it's not always a perfect white wall or oh there's a window there I didn't expect that and and things like that so it was interesting I think like problem solving on the day from from our point and the students um but yeah hopefully that's a bit of a summary but if you want me to elaborate on anything no I mean I think that's a perfect point to ask um 
maybe maybe as you were talking about as we began in the host in mm -hmm. um maybe jeremy who, who jeremy rosen's here who represents his group of students who were working there jeremy mm -hmm. maybe you could talk about um maybe you could start by talking about the title of your exhibition yeah. and why you chose that title yeah. and how that affected the choice of works and problems and solutions in hanging in that kind yeah. of semi-public context yeah absolutely so um the title actually came after we selected the works because the deadline was so tight that we had to look through the website very quickly and kind of make some decisions and fundamentally as a group we all had rather different tastes and so when I was looking at what we had selected I was thinking a lot about Cornwall and I was of course then thinking about Daphne du Maurier <laughs> and her very famous book Rebecca which kind of epitomizes Cornwall in so many different aspects um, and I remember this quote um, from the book and I'll just read it very quickly it's from the chapter five and she wrote if only there could be an invention that bottled up a memory like scent and it never faded and it never got stale and then when one wanted it, the bottle could be uncorked and it would be like living the moment all over again. And so when I was looking at our selection, that was sort of what occurred to me. I was like, well, it's not really about necessarily this is a study of seascapes or this is a study of still lifes or color or whatever. This is a study of memory and not so much in the sense of what we as the curators think about, but the people who come in and the customers who come in and start looking at the works and what do they feel and what do they think and what do they associate with St. Knives and Cornwall and everything else and so that was our kind of our vision um for the purpose for the theme and and for everything else it kind of is also based off of uh wordsworth who wrote about spots of time um in his uh work the prelude so that was kind of the general idea quite romantic so, yes very romantic the, which, the, the yeah. landscape and and frankly being there in november with the weather it was it was also had that sort of vibe as well which was which was great um and then working with host was 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 different we had no idea what to expect obviously um but fair play to uh, Rassi who's the owner he could not have been any more helpful he was absolutely fantastic and his staff were fantastic great us. barista great barista <laughs> uh they were so willing to help and so the biggest challenge was frankly is that as uh, was mentioned before it was an old bank building and so a lot of it was of this brick interior which meant that we actually couldn't move things around very much um, because the hanging materials were already in place so we sort of had to kind of take everything off, look at what we had. And then obviously we had works of varying sizes. We had everything from extremely large paintings to tiny little ceramic octopus plates and all sorts of things in between and trying to figure out the best placement where people would actually be sort of able to look at this piece in the best light when they were sitting at their table, having dinner. Um, that kind of took our mode basically most of the time in the end. I think we even had less time probably than the other groups because they weren't open. Um, yeah, sorry, you had an hour yeah. delay before you could get going. So you were super quick. That's you right. were like um, yeah. But um, but it was good. It was really in a way having the limited space kind of helped um that aspect a lot because we were able to just sort of problem solve really quickly and not worry about necessarily trying to form a narrative, as it were. Um, because our idea was all about personal interaction anyways, it, it actually worked really well that people would just kind of be drawn to what they felt was interesting at that point. Um, but it worked really well. We worked very well together as a group. Um, and the other big piece of it was that once the bar and the restaurant opened, um, Rassi was really good about making sure that people saw each piece, that uh, they read our little blurb explaining sort of the idea behind everything. And then uh, I was able to kind of go around and the rest of the group was able to go around and talk to people while they were having dinner, hopefully not interrupting them too much, uh, but kind of explain a few things. And yeah, we had very positive responses from everybody. So it was I didn't realize you've done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, think yeah. a couple of my colleagues had, um, I think Lewis and Alice yeah, they there, came for dinner. For dinner. Yeah. Um, I was going to join them and couldn't do me if I was up at the hotel, but yeah, that, that would have been interesting. Was, as well. Yeah, so that was, he was like, it was, he was a tour de force Rassi on that, was making sure that we introduced anybody that was mildly associated with art and St. Eyes at that time who happened to be there, we got introduced to and had a nice conversation with. So, so in many ways. I, I, sorry, I, I just wanted to say that I really love the idea behind um, the, the theme for the show. Um, I think memory and um, 
kind of that emotional connectedness to a landscape is a huge, huge selling influence uh, in St. Ives. Um, I think people are there because they're taking a moment often out of their normal, very stressful lives to have a holiday, to have a, um, to have time out. And it's a place that's very easy. It's very beautiful to fall in love with. And it feels kind of wild and remote and actually kind of away from stress. And I, I think that sense of emotion that a painting can um, can make you feel is is hugely influential in what we sell and who we who we how we sell in St Ives and, and I think as well the memory that you know St Ives for a lot of people it is a place that holds their memories it holds taking the children there or they went as a child and they take their partner um they want to get married there they got married there and it's the place they go on their um anniversaries so I, I thought actually from a selling point of view those two ideas were really really strong absolutely what, what I was going to say is that in a sense you you have the advantage over the other students in in hell was some of the captive audience yeah, because yeah, people yeah, were actually, coming into exactly. the bar and we had, dinner yeah we have a lot of people although obviously it's a less a less in other ways it's not such an ideal place for it's, some it didn't allow us to kind of let the arts sort of speak for yeah. itself um, yeah. but it did allow us to probably talk to way more people than we would have been able to otherwise which was really exciting yeah so moving on to um, um Beatrice and Maria you were in the St Ives Arts Club which as Katie's already explained is Right, it's opposite there, there on Gallery on West Cop Keys, right on top of the sea on the on the Fisherman's Bay. Um, and, and, and so yours would be seen by passersby as a space that they may or may not be tempted to walk into. Do you, so do you want to say first something about your title and your choice of works and then maybe talk about did people come in and were they what were they interested in? Um yes, Hello, Rich. Yeah. Uh, Beatrice. Uh, um, our title was Nuances of Nature, and it came out by our first reunion with also the other team members. And first of all, we've never been to some time before, and so we did some research, and what we found out was the impressive, also by your gallery, the impressive collection that the artists uh, produces about paintings and the landscape. So this relationship between the, the mysterious, the different nuances of representing the same landscape, landscape sometimes go to our, our project. And yeah, so these were the titles. So in some ways quite similar to Jeremy's it's idea that was based on, yeah, yeah. Um, but more, more obviously about the sea and the, and the, and the yeah, nature. Yeah, and I think we were very lucky to display in the St. Ives Art Club because we had a space all to ourselves, which some of the other groups didn't have, the three that were in the, the main gallery. And I think it gave us quite a bit of freedom to do anything that we wanted. And even though it, it was quite nice, there were some struggles with the room. There was a, a big open kitchen on one side, which we used some uh, some movable walls to try to cover up <laughs> to create more of yes. like a white cube uh, yeah. gallery space. There were some big windows that influenced where we could paint the art and things like that. Um, but yes, in in general, it was quite a, a lovely space. And uh, yes, we had some trouble at the beginning with it because we also selected made too many paintings and they were too big. So we also had to rethink about the exhibition and uh, thanks uh, by the help of, of the staff of the gallery, we made out to select in the, the right paintings. Mm -hmm. And we also ended up by creating an amazing relationship between 2D works and 3D works because we had a lot of um, sculpture also. And thanks, as we were saying to the um, to the space in which we created the exhibition, we had this opportunity to create like a path inside the, the gallery space and so to connect the, the viewer with the both 2D works, 3D works, and to find their, their ideal work. And yeah, we had. And I think being in the arts club, people mm -hmm. also came. 
from here yes. at Club Ventures. And oh, that's good. Yes, they were artists themselves. And yeah. so we were able to speak to them about how they create their work in St. Ives and their own emotional connections, the landscape, which obviously worked very well with our theme. Um, I think just people passing by on the street didn't enter quite as frequently. Mm -hmm. I think the doorway wasn't uh, quite clear that yeah. there was an exhibition going on that they could enter, but we, we, did, <laughs> we did have a few visitors that just wandered in off the street, but yeah, mainly it was uh, the arts club members. Yeah, yeah. Then, because they were curious about what, what we were doing there because it's not open on that. And they were treated by the, the pathos that was inside our exhibition because as we said, the nature was about landscape art and we were in front of the sea. So the, there was this great connection between sea and landscapes. And so we tried to communicate that that's the pathos of the thing. And it's also like the host inn is on a corner of a yes. crossroads. Yes. Um, the St. Ives Arts Club is actually at the, at the end of an alley that comes down from many hotels and yes. restaurants, um, including Dragena Castle Hotel, which is where we all stayed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's also, I seem to remember there's little places to sit, people stop and sit there. There's a little yeah. bench that looks there's like a bench outside, yeah, so that it gathers people. But it was funny because we saw a lot of people from outside the window that were looking inside. <laughs> yes. but, yeah, but yeah, because you don't know why at the end they didn't came in. Oh. And it was curious because maybe uh, we should have to um, create a graphic to put that in the app. Yeah. So, you, the, so they, yeah. yeah. So you're kind of learning about how do we convert those people who are kind of looking in the windows yeah, <laughs> to yeah. actually coming in and, you know, maybe they don't feel, maybe they feel concerns that there's a pressure to buy. They're not quite certain how much things are going to be. Typical things that people feel before they enter an, a commercial art gallery, actually. Mm -hmm is this for me is this in my price range yeah so that that's we might we're, we're obviously we'll probably come back to in the conversation um and I, I know that one of your key pieces was a big jack davis yes. seascape which yeah yeah the jack davis was the one that alicia and katie showed in london. i think they actually showed that painting in the london show recently as well yeah and so, I, I love i love the fact that the St. Ives Society of Artists, of, um, it says, we are the closest art society to the sea in the world. And I think <laughs> that painting of the sea could not get closer to the sea itself, you know, in the winter. I wonder, winter, 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 wonder how true that is. That's quite interesting. I wonder how true that is, whether there's other galleries that are, you know. <laughs> is it, uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, we'll, come, we'll, we'll probably come back to, to, to everybody. But um um, just to explain that um, an, another uh, another um, student has, has has come in Kwan Wan, uh, we, uh, known as Derek, and he is with a, another gallery. And if I remember rightly, you're, you were in Alyssa, the Alyssa and Katie's main gallery at Westcott yes. Quay yes. with two other groups. So you were sharing spaces, yes. but you had your own space. And uh, we'll come, come to you in a moment. I think you, you, do you, want, you, do you was part of a group that were at the Salt House Gallery that Kate has already spoken about, which is a pop-up gallery, yeah. as Kate has said, very reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, yeah, I organised that because um, I had already bought a painting from when I'd been down there with the family one summer. You know, I typically you see these galleries and uh, uh, there was an artist showing paintings and I purchased one. So, and I realised it I had by speaking to the artist who was there. I said, oh, you know, is this your 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 main gallery? And they said, no, I'm only here for a week. And um, that's why I approached them to ask how much it cost. I was, it was incredibly cheap, actually, <laughs> compared to somewhere like London or, or the King's Road, where you're talking about 2,000 plus fat a week. I think this was like 200, 240, yeah. you know, and it's out of season, um, but it's still... Still remarkable. Anyway, Eugene, could you tell us what the title of your show was? It was another romantic title. Our title is uh, Slow Time, Slow Tide. And the first time when we come up with this title, it was richer. And because the time, because the time is really limited, we have to report to our teacher about the title. <laughs> so we just uh, looked across the website about the paintings, and we found this uh, most of them about the landscape, about stuff. 
um, just some still still works um, of the painting. So, and also our title is related to the theme tranquility, and it's also about like the stress and about the uh, life pace in city. Even though you know the London city, the, the travel in London could be slow, but the lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. with all that, the uh, St. Ives is a city, it's about the ocean, it's about the nature. So we thought, well, it's really a good place for holidays, to spend holidays. So we just choose the like the Trinquanti. And also we want to spend the slow time there. And also, you know, the, the next part of the title, slow tide. The tide have two meanings. The first is about the ocean, and the second is about the life pace. So we just want to you know, we just uh come, uh, we just come from our own life experience. We want to slow down our life, yeah. And also, we choose many artworks about our preference, about the landscape, and about the poetry. And also, uh, like we got a lot of lettering on walls about our title. We, that was beautiful, yeah. Like, if you want to, you. you'd cut out these letters for slow time, slow time. Yeah, it's very beautiful. We draw it ourselves and we cut yeah. it down from the paper, and we really love that design, yes. Yeah, so. And you also, in terms of display, you, you displayed one of the paintings on, um, a, chair. on a chair. Yeah, the painting is about a woman and a chair. Mm -hmm. Put the woman on the chair on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that. It's kind of quite Magritte, quite surreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually, firstly, we want to give up that pen because there was no space on the wall to put yeah. on it. But but we just put it on the chair to have a rest, and we thought, no, it's really good for that. So we just, <laughs> yeah, so we just put it on the chair. Beautiful and what did you get any? Footfall. Did you did you find that you were a little bit out of the way, or were people coming in? Oh yeah, a little bit. Because firstly, we need to you know carry on a lot of pens to the soft halls, and the, the it works in the streets. It's not like beside the ocean or something. Yeah. But we just you know we just ourselves we get out of the gallery to find friends to find people to visit. Yeah. So yeah, during that time we. Made many new friends, so I think there's nothing. Uh, it's really good, actually. That's fantastic. And what what were the facilities like there? Did was there? You know, th this is interesting for students on an art business program of where you get a pop up gallery. What kind of like and also in the St Ives Arts Club were there plenty of? Could you make cups of cup of tea? You know, was it warm enough? Um, you know, uh, you know, yeah, we got some champagne or something yeah. on the main, main gallery, yeah. but we didn't like get too much from that. So you had a refrigerator for <laughs> some. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you had a kettle and so sort of things like that. So there's a there's there's a number of facilities that are available because the thing is, if you get get one of these pop up galleries, and Katie and Alyssa will have, you know, you've got to check out that there's a like there's a washroom. Oh, yeah. for the clients often say, you know, can I use it? And 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 whether there's facilities for making tea and so on, you know, just these kind of minimum requirements really. Because I know some pop up gallery spaces people get there and they think, oh God, it hasn't got, you know. Gonna have to constantly go out and buy coffee. Uh, yes, no the, other, the, the other thing, David, to to note about pop ups, because that's in effect what you were, were all doing in St Ives, is that galleries like the Salt House and the Crypt, which is under the St Ives Society of Artists, opposite, and is another pop up gallery. They they normally run on one week cycles, um, so you get a, a gallery from um, eight a.m. on Saturday morning till uh 8 p.m on friday evening of course everyone's trying to get the most out of every minute of their the, you know friday and saturday being very important days and um what you often find is kind of i, I would say stress points uh, on a Friday evening where you're trying to stay as long as possible to eke out that last footfall in St Ives till five or six o'clock. But also the next tenant is desperate to get in and mm -hmm. start hagging so they can hit the ground rolling on Saturday morning. Um, I, I'm not, <laughs> that, that's often a moment of like stress and we always just advise compassion and understanding for both parties. Is that 
right, Katie. But, you know, <laughs> doing it commercially uh, carries all the pressures that you had with a three hour slot on a on one afternoon to get your paintings up because you want to get them out. You want to get people seeing them. Mm, absolutely. And then, Derek, you were you were with a group in the Westcott Key uh, Livingston Gallery and um, you, your your title, if I remember, was Make Yourself at Home. Yes, that's the one. Yes. So do you want to talk about why you chose that title and how the works were chosen along with well, that? Typically, McKenna chose to um, choose the title for us, okay. but we decided on um, like our title democratically, I believe, because yeah. we have um, we utilized the voting system on WhatsApp. We used a lot of WhatsApp, um, uh, not just about the, our title, um, just so that we voted, okay, just gonna be make yourself at home. Sounds cozy, sounds fun, let's do this. And um, fortunately, I mean, extremely fortunately, we got the best space in that, in the Livingstone <laughs> Gallery. And that window by the, um, the, blue, the, the blue palette uh, painting, that was awesome. I mean, everyone loves it. And I, um, like because so the, wind, the window looks out. Yeah, we look something to see. And so assertive about putting that painting on that space because I know that the very first moment anyone entered this space, the first thing he or she going to notice is their painting. Mm. And that's and that comes from part of the experience uh, when I'm working with uh, in two commercial galleries. And um, that is maybe. The first attention you want to attract from your client or, or from your not, not just client, maybe visitors, because you he or he or she will remember that painting, even though she's not he's not buying it, not taking it back to home. He realized we know that oh, I, I had a good experience in the space. Maybe someday I'll do a purchase, maybe I'll recommend somebody here. Yeah. And another thing, another painting, which is like a wider one, um, with uh, it's, it's a red and red palette. Alicia and Katie can probably help out. Yes, uh, the, 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 the one with um, her legs with the socks on and black cast line. Mm -hmm. um, the black line side. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't remember the name of it, but... Um, what, what's the name, Katie? Oh, it was, it was one of Neve Birch's. Um, I can't remember the title. It might have yeah. Been. Yeah. yeah, for the podcast, by the way, maybe Katie could send us just a list of some of the names of the artists that were shown yeah. for, for the listeners to, to check, check out. I mean, the best thing, to be honest, is just to go to your website and look at, you know, look at the artist's works. Yeah, um, it was a huge. It was a huge range um, that got yeah. chosen. You know, almost yeah. all of our artists were represented in these shows. Did you just 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 while I remember it, Michael uh, uh, Gaza yes. kindly at Belgrade Gallery kindly also lent a few works from his more more historical St Ives artists um, works. Did did you choose any? Did any, maybe did any of you two have works from Michael? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did one. Yeah, um, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, it was uh, there was like these dancing figures, I believe, or yeah, I think that was Flying Angels, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we had yeah, Michael very kindly we reached out to him and he loaned us twelve works, so each group could have uh, kind of two pieces, and those we um we kind of did as a bit of a wild card. So we the, the students didn't choose those. We kind of once we'd seen their selections, we kind of allocated two per group just as a that were felt relevant to what they were doing but perhaps you know looked quite different visually or you know they, they were worked from kind of 20th century artists so we had um some Patrick Herons and Terry Frost's um piece mm -hmm. by Willem Lance Graham um no, mainly art mainly deceased artists whereas I'm most really of your works were obviously by living artists so that was quite a nice thing to add, add to each mm -hmm. yeah uh, the other thing I was going to ask Derek is that I think you were the only gallery that decided to have music. Yes, um, that's like that's my suggestion actually. Yeah. And um, the fun story about that is also we put that um, stereo stereo system next, ne just next to the uh, the painting I just described, and we had the table 
right beneath it mm -hmm. that we stole it from others <laughs> and, and, uh, and also also the chair that is made out of gears and down straps um we kind of like you know getting any resource we can um and gathering together and see if it works out and uh, at last it works out. and there is two pots of plants that we placed be uh, between uh, paintings and so that's the make yourself a home title thing yes. being played out you know yes. you've got your music playing you've yes. got the chair and your yeah. table and, 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 and the fun, st fun story about that um speaker then it's not my not my speaker i actually and traveled to Whitechapel to collect a speaker from others <laughs> two days before the trip. It's like a little Sonos or something. Um, there are other brands available. Yeah, I, but, but it, it's a Spose, and uh, I also I always love them. Mm. Um, what do you think about music? I mean, Alicia and Katie, do you ever use music as an ambience in a gallery? We, we, we don't really in St. Ives because we mm. have the sound of the sea and mm. we I don't, I grew up in St. Ives and I, I almost can't always hear it because I'm not always listening. But in Westcotts, there's always the sound of the sea and there's enough footfall, both in Westcotts and our former gallery on Four Street, that there's a kind of, is a background kind of sound. Buzz. So we, we don't, because it feels like there's already a background sound mm -hmm. but in our former gallery in Perrinpore that was a much larger building um and that didn't have that amount of footfall and kind of passing noise we often did use music to take away that feeling of stillness I um mm -hmm. and that's we've never really discussed music that's just been something we've automatically done or not done is that right Katie yeah I had um some clients in Westcott's Quay um a couple of days ago or last week maybe and they actually said oh it's really nice that it is quiet because if you're if you're thinking about a serious purchase you kind of want to look at it in peace and they were talking about they were telling me about a, a competition a com another gallery in St Ives where they were lots of people in but they were just you know chatting away but not about art you know they're just having a chat and there was loads of music and lots of background noise and they nearly mm -hmm. bought something and actually they they left because they you know they kind of couldn't concentrate on what they were looking at because they were just distracted by all these other things so I think it's um I think it's quite interesting um and if there is music I think it's always quite quiet and it's just to kind of break that um that stillness as you say Alicia. but I think yeah the sea is the best yeah, we we enjoyed it in the domestic setting Derek with your chairs and tables that was really fun thank you very much it's like when you're um when you're sitting in I was sitting in a pub the other day actually over Christmas and it's right by the river in Kew where I live the bull's head it's a very old building very kind of haunted really and there's this lovely room um small room that looks out over the river and um when there's pipe music when, when when they turn the music because they do have some pipe music and suddenly it went silent and I said isn't it you can hear the buzz of people chatting in the pub and you can hear the fire crackling and you know it just suddenly feels a lot more authentic somehow <laughs> rather than having to cover some kind of pipe pop music in your ear that you haven't chosen yourself so it's just it's an interesting point music because some galleries talk quite a lot about using musical ambiences and sometimes of course it's the artist's choice you know that an art, some artists actually want the music to be played alongside their work because it's part of the experience but generally speaking i i agree it's not a great idea you know maybe it previews just in the background a bit of sort of jazzy music um another gallery that has appeared on on the podcast jd mallet and made there they they usually have music playing there, but it's quite appropriate it's kind of quite laid back jazzy and you know it's not intrusive but I think it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a risk to put music on, you know, it's, it's less risky not to have music than to have it, in my opinion. Yeah. We also, we also have the sound of seagulls. Yeah. The, the... <laughs> Who are, of course, the kind of not, you know, they're kind of enemies when you're in St. Ives. I had, I had a complete ice cream taken out of my <laughs> Dive bombing the, the advice is the advice is to stand against a wall when yeah. you eat an ice cream or a pasty because they find they it harder. Yeah, they can't 
He could have an exit strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see there's spies. Have you noticed that? There's a kind of poor, sorry looking seagull just standing on its own somewhere on a wall. Yeah. And you can see people feeling slightly sorry for it. <laughs> and then the, it's acting as a kind of decoy, really. For all the other, anyway, that's another aspect of some lives. Um, just coming to the, you talked about, Katie talked about, we had a little prize, which is we gave all the students a fictional budget um each and I think it's 20,000 yeah, pounds I think there were there were regulations that you could only you had to purchase a, at least one work from each gallery yes, is that right. Right? Yes. um and um we decided that the prize would go to the the gallery all the students had to submit where that what works they bought and where they bought them and um uh and, and the prize actually went to um the um Beatrice and Maria's Nuances of Nature group at the St. Ives uh, Arts Club. Um, they did have the Jack Davis. Yes, I don't know whether that was anything to do with it, but you know, they, that seemed to sort of sell well to a lot of the other students. Um, but anyway, congratulations that you won that. <laughs> there are different ways we could have done this prize. And um, I think I think Eugene's group came kind of second to oh, the, the, in, that, in, in, in that as well. Um, so, so, but you know, all of the, the, the there's I'd just like to mention actually that the two groups that aren't represented today um uh, were it's just interesting to hear their titles so they were both also in Alicia and Katie's space at West Cockey one of them was called chromatic Re revelations which is interesting because chromatic revelations is a bit like your color theme that mm. you use in crystal and the other one was called um a modern day dinner party Mm -hmm. um, and I think both of them were based on the choice of works where they had they they chose works that like still lives and with a with a dining theme. So uh, it's just interesting for the listeners here to hear about those other two groups. And uh, they were also you know really really nice exhibitions that got very good feedback I think from the public and from the other students and from us. So it was a it was a great event. I, did you? Did any of you want to add anything else about whether, you know, do you think this was a helpful activity to have on the programme? Yes, I think it's an amazing mm -hmm. activity. Yeah. Very useful, very professional practice, yes. as you mentioned before. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, some of the students had already curated shows or been interns in galleries that would have helped you actually with the hanging. Did any of you have any problems with that, the actual physical logistical problems of hanging the works or placing the sculptures? Unfortunately, we got um, Sergey. He is so helpful. <laughs> Nell and all the nails in the wall. And... He was good at that. Was he's he? good. He's so yeah, good. yeah. This perfect <laughs> guy. I have the measure, and he just all right. Nail it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're all. Most of us are used to hanging paintings mm -hmm. in our homes, but it's not as easy as you might think. <laughs> and aesthetically, it's very interesting because. You can measure as much as you like and then something still might not look quite right so a lot of it is just to do with the human eye not mathematical principles yes i think there's definitely an issue in quirky historic buildings by the sea where there's been a lot of movement our former home on fourth street had about eight centimeters difference between the height of the wall at one end and the other yeah. uh so for series you kind of never quite knew whether you should just let the series go <laughs> higher or not. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of just doing it to the eye um, in those like non-white cube settings. Yeah, I think that's really important. Unless and you also, can you also say something about Fourth Street having a very narrow staircase to the upper space and how you get large works into that upper space. Yes, so we took inspiration. So we, a very, very old, um, this was a two cottages that have been knocked through together, now sharing one staircase that is probably about three or 400 years old, uh, made for very small people uh, who had very small furniture. I, presumably a lot of their furniture was built in the room. Um, uh, so to get our paintings from the ground floor to the first floor, we, we took inspiration from these old cottages, which frequently have a, a coffin hatch um on the level of the bedroom so that when when you finally passed away you're you can be built into your coffin uh by the carpenters who come up and then lowered down uh through the floor so we basically cut a kind of narrow coffin hatch but to get paintings up and up and down um which is which is just a very interesting uh concept 
of course, in in Amsterdam, where we're we're going for Master Art that we visit Amsterdam, you know, they have the same problem with furniture in their upper rooms. They have these hooks with pulleys that you can lift the paintings and furniture up to those upper rooms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I think I think you would agree that you only really learn about the practicalities of art business when you actually have to do it, and a lot of it is just about physical hard work and you know logistics I think. <laughs> so um I think now I'm just aware of the time I think we're, we're we've probably come to the end of this discussion and um so I'd just like to just to thank everybody again for taking part today uh Al Alicia Livingston and Katie Close <laughs> the director of uh, Alicia's eponymous gallery uh in St Ives and uh no doubt um we'll probably do another podcast with Alicia later in the year talk about how business is going um and um, um thank you very much to our student representatives today from the from the, the, the curator gallery project in St Ives um Juan Juan Derek um Beatrice and Beatrice Galelo and Maria Maria Whitby um Yuji Pei and Jeremy Rosen thank you very much for your contributions and um hope the listeners enjoyed that so thank you thank you bye